welcome again to this wonderful time in God's presence. A genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is all you need. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, the Bible says, And God appeared in Shiloh again. He appeared in Shiloh, but only one man, Samuel, that he revealed himself to. He said he revealed himself to Samuel by his word. So Samuel had an encounter with the word of God. The word of God is God. The word of God is all you need to have stability on earth. So where the word of God dwells, God dwells there. And when the word of God dwells richly in you, then you have stability. Absolutely important. Psalm 119 verse 18, the psalmist cried out and said, Open thou my eyes. Was he blind physically? No. But he needed his eyes to be opened in the realm of the spirit to the word of God. Open thou my eyes, O Lord, that I might behold wondrous and glorious things out of thy law. In other words, when you get your eyes open to the word of God, you become a wonder. You are filled and clothed with the glory of God. No more shame. He said that we looked unto him, our faces were lightened, and we were not ashamed. That is the way it works. You change, you change from glory to glory when your eyes are opened to the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You begin to get into continuous progress. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. That's the way it works. The path of the church shineth better and better until the perfect day. And the word of God is light. Darkness cannot comprehend it. John chapter 1, verse 5. So the word of God must dwell richly in us. I pray today that you have an encounter with the word of life the word of God. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, while he yet spake to me, the spirit entered me and stood me on my feet and established me. The word of God will always establish you. The word of God will always make you to stand out in the affairs of life. So there is no substitute to the word of God. There is no substitute to an encounter with the spirit of the living God. I pray today that you begin to have this unquenchable thirst for the word of God and for encounters with the Holy Spirit. I want you to pray, so, oh Lord, open my eyes. I want to see your word. I want to have an encounter with you, a genuine encounter of a lifetime. Oh Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Let your word enter me. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, the entrance of the word of God into us lightens us up. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 he says something wonderful he says the word entered Jacob and it lighted up Israel I pray that the word of God will enter us today pray oh Lord let your word enter me let your word enter me let it light up my environment let it light up my nation let your word guide me oh Lord open my eyes to see that glorious and wondrous things out of thy law. Job chapter 42 verse 5. He said, I had you by the hearing of the ears, but now my eyes see it thee. My eyes see it your word. Oh Lord, open my eyes. I want to have an encounter of a lifetime with you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He said, I stand on my watch to see what he would tell me, to see, to have an encounter with the word, not just only to hear, to see Acts chapter 10 verse 44 he said the spirit fell upon them that had Peter while Peter yet spake as they were listening and having an encounter with the word of God, the Holy Spirit came upon them, that's the way it works Luke chapter 21 verse 38 he said early in the morning all of them came to Jesus and to hear him not to play around because it is where what you hear from him that sustains you and whomever you listen to that is what you attract to yourself god said to adam 
and Eve. He said, who told you? You have been listening to someone one else. And because you are hearing the person, you are getting the person's result. So when you begin to hear God, you begin to have an encounter with him. You begin to know him. You begin to get his results. That's why Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, he said, those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Wow! But those that don't know their God, conversely, they shall be weak and they shall be exploited. A whole lot of people have been exploited on earth. They are victims, cheap victims in the affairs of life. And this program is set by God to move you from where you are to where you ought to be and to get into the stability of our times, which is knowledge and wisdom and understanding. I pray that God will open you today, open you up to understanding. In Luke chapter 24, verse 45, the Bible says Jesus entered they are in their midst and opened their understanding. I pray that our understanding will be open today. Psalm 119, the psalmist cried out. He said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. Psalm 119, he says something, 144. He says something very important. He said, Psalm, he said, give me understanding that I might live. In other words, if you don't have an understanding of the issues of life, of the word of God, of the pattern of God, of the will of God, you will become a loafer in the affairs of life. You just merely exist. You become a wanderer, a vagabond in the sphere of life. You will not be able to occupy your space. And Jesus said, occupy till I come. I pray today you have a genuine encounter with the word of God. I pray today that you will allow the word of God to enter you. I pray today you will not be distracted from the purpose of God for your life. And I'm praying for someone over there. As you are there today, the word of God shall enter you. The word of God shall enter you. The word of God shall enter you. The light of the glorious gospel shall shine upon you. In the matchless name of Jesus. Pericata, Rebo Shakata Ricredea, Rebo Shotoso Precate Sete, Rakata Precoshoto Zebaya, Poricataria, Psalm nineteen, verse two. He says, Day unto day utter a speech. Lord, I want to hear you today for myself. Day unto day utter a speech. Lord, speak to me today. Pray, speak to me today. I want to hear your voice for myself. I want to hear your voice for this nation, for the nations of the world. I want to hear you concerning things that are happening. I want to know my place in your sphere of things, oh Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm praying for someone over there now. Every enemy of your progress, within and without, I command them to wither. In the name of Jesus, I pray today, my God, shall rearrange your life for greater success. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray that my God shall give you the grace to live holy in him and you shall not miss eternity with him. In the name of Jesus, every evil hand pointing against you, I command them to dry up now. Every wicked agenda for your life, I bury them today. In the name of Jesus, every river in your place of bath, I command so to release your virtues and dry up. In the name of Jesus, every satanic ritual targeted at you, I command them to backfire. In the name of Jesus, I pray today that my God shall contend with them that contend with you. In the name of Jesus, every negative dream shall not come to pass in your life. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus, every satanic battle at the age of your breakthrough, I command them to die today. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today. The Holy Ghost, my helper, the Holy Ghost, my ever-present helper in time of need, shall kill every sickness in your life. In the name of Jesus, every hunter of darkness seeking for your failure, I command them to die. In the name of Jesus, your ego shall mount up and soar. In the name of Jesus, I decree today that your success is sure. I decree today that your success is sure. Though it tarries, it shall surely come. In the name of Jesus, no matter what people say, my father is the winner. Therefore, you shall surely win in the affairs of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, every intellectual enemy, 
boasting against you. I command them to become foolish in the matchless name of Jesus. Every evil genius boasting against you, I command them to be wasted in the name of Jesus. River of your life, I command them to flow into breakthroughs in the matchless name of Jesus. I pray today that my God shall give you the key to unlock your treasures in the matchless name of Jesus. Wherever you are, receive the keys. Receive the keys now. Receive them. Receive them in the name of Jesus. I decree today, you ragada brobo shoto robra baderidia, ropo popo shete robra baderidia. My God shall fill you. My God shall fill you. I pray today, every tree of your life shall be fruitful and shall multiply. The milk of your life shall not go sour. In the name of Jesus, I decree today, by the favor of God, you shall tap into God's power today. In the name of Jesus, I decree that my Father shall turn every weapon of your enemies to nothingness. In the matchless name of Jesus, I decree that your mouth shall be larger than those of your enemies. In the name of Jesus, every power challenging God in your life, I command them to somersault and die. In the name of Jesus, you shall sing a new song and dance a new dance this year. In the name of Jesus, every evil gang up against your destiny, I command them to scatter and die. In the name of Jesus, oh, I pray today, my God shall arise and make you a mysterious wonder. In the matchless name of Jesus, you shall not make unpardonable mistakes in the affairs of life. I decree today that the pattern of God shall come to pass in your life. Every dispatterning agent in your life, I command them to be separated from you forever. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus, I decree you shall not miss your space on planet Earth. You shall occupy it if Jesus comes. I decree that you shall not miss eternity with God. Never. In Jesus' matchless and most powerful name. Amen. The mystery of gratitude. Wow. Thank you is a very powerful thing. Those that don't appreciate God, that don't appreciate the vessels God use or uses to help them, they won't go far. If you don't live in appreciation, you will depreciate. And God demands it. God wants it. That's the way it happens. Why must we appreciate God? Why must we live in gratitude? Number one, it is a good thing. Psalm 92 verse 1 says, It is good. It is good to give thanks to God. It is good to praise God. In other words, there is something good. When God says there is something good in something, until you do it, you will not see the good. Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. So you can understand this. If it is good, it is good. Now listen, in very clear terms. The, 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 oh, I, I pray you will get this. Everything requires praise. Everything requires thanksgiving. Everything. If God says so, your own is to obey. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Whosoever you obey, is who is your master. So if you obey God, God is your master. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says, Always, in everything, give thanks to God. Always, and in everything, give thanks to God. It's not a suggestion. And when you obey, you will eat the fruit thereof. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, it says, In everything, beloved, everything on earth requires praise and thanksgiving to God. In everything. Give thanks to God, for this is the will, the will of God in Christ Jesus. And what God desires on earth is for his will to be done. And when you do his will, you get his result. 
Hebrew chapter 10, verse 36. He said, after you have done his will, then you can inherit the promises. So the way to inherit God's promises is to do his will. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. He says, doing the will of God with a perfect heart. Don't be hypocrites. Don't be men pleased as an eye service people. That is what the whole world is all about. They are praising God with the mouth, with the lips, but their hearts are far from God. God looks at the heart. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 21. He said, who are these that engage their hearts in approaching me? And we are this, and God reeled out blessings unto them. So it's a heart issue. You must begin from your heart, appreciate God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. He said, Guide your heart with all diligence, for out of faith flows the very issues of life. In other words, I need to give God thanks from my heart, and my mouth will say so. And in doing that in anything, then I can be sure that i activate god look at the way it works psalm 23 22 verse 3 he said god inhabits the praises of his people in other words when i'm praising god when i'm giving him thanks it is his will and god is very serious concerning his will because his will is his purpose eternal purpose his will is his pattern his will is his plan that's the way it works and that is what God is interested in that's why Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 he says seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness the will of God and all other things will be added they will not be added until you do his will that is the way it works we need to come in tandem with God come in tandem with his big picture be on the same page with him. That is what his will is. Jesus teaching us the pattern of prayer. Say, pray you like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is God's primary purpose. Our prayer line and our activities on earth must be tied down to it. Must be tied down to this. It must have the favor of the will of God. That's the way it works. Anytime you get out of it, then you are out of God. Anytime you get out of the will of God, then you are in trouble. In other words, you need to be an inheritor of the promises of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, 36 says, do his will. Do his will. The word of God is his will. That's why in Psalm chapter 56, verse 4 and verse 10, he said, I will praise your word. I will celebrate your word. We don't celebrate men's achievements. We celebrate the will of God, the word of God. And God celebrates us. That's the way it works. Men celebrate men. Men celebrate achievements. But we don't celebrate achievements. We celebrate the will of God, the word of God. That's the way it works. Why? Because when we celebrate the word of God, the word of God is his will. Because when God speaks, his hand performs. That's the way it works. First Kings chapter 8 verse 15 and verse 24 once God speaks his hand will perform so if God has spoken it then when we begin to give him thanks it will activate his presence and his hand will perform it in our lives a lot of people God's will is failing in their lives that's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 15 it says truth felix so don't allow it to fall in your life when God speaks his hand performs don't forget 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15 and verse 24. Then you have to activate that hand. And the way you activate the hand is through praise and thanksgiving. So that he will perform his word in your life. Anything God does on earth cannot be done by human energy. It must be done by the energy of the Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It's not by human power or human might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Oh, the wicked shall be silent in darkness. 
he says by the arm of flesh no man can prevail in other words nobody can do anything sustainable on earth with the energy of the flesh you need the hand of god to activate the hand of god we need to praise and thank him and when we take that he will inhabit it so you need to provoke the hand of god you need to provoke the presence of god and in the presence of god there is fullness of joy when the presence of god comes his truth will be activated and truth will not fail i pray the truth of god will not fail it's failing in many people's life that's why that Isaiah chapter 59 verse 5 he said truth fell it why because there was no intercessor nobody to stand in the gap and praise god and do the will of god and to activate the will and to provoke his hand to come to work and god was displeased that there was no man so that is the way it works god is looking for a man ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 he said, God is searching for that man. May you be that man. May you be the man that begins to live a life of praise and thanksgiving to God. It's a mystery. The mystery of gratitude. What you can live in joy. You will see many things will begin to happen just effortlessly in your life. That's what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, rejoice forevermore. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, verse 6. It says, rejoice, rejoice. I say rejoice. Rejoice. It doesn't matter whether things are working good or they are not working good, but just rejoice. God will make them to work together for your own good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. I remember this song and wonderful song you have had me sing it a couple of times shout hallelujah anyhow don't let that problem weigh you down when that problem comes your way when 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 not if it must come lift your hands and praise the lord shout hallelujah anyhow the problem must come if you need the parade of God, the parade of heaven, the hand of God to walk, the angels of God to walk on your behalf, you need to praise him. You need to thank him in that situation. Instead of murmuring and complaining, First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 will bring in the devourer. When you murmur and complain, you activate the devil. It is the devil's fuel. You are giving the devil fuel. When you go into forgiveness, bitterness, complaining, murmuring, and all the sins, of omission and commission you are giving the devil fuel and it's against you you are destroying yourself ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 16 he said why do you destroy yourself verse 17 he said why should you want to die before your time i pray that you will not destroy yourself go into this mystery of thanksgiving begin to thank the lord it is his will it activates him it makes his hand to come to work remember that first king chapter 8 verse 15 and 24 said in clear terms he said god has spoken his hand will bring it to pass and the one that is interesting much to me is joshua chapter 21 verse 45 he says there faileth not out of anything that god spoke he said all came to pass may that be our portion as we begin to praise him God will make those things to come to pass in our lives. All the good things he has spoken concerning us. All the good things he has spoken concerning this time and generation. In the matchless name of Jesus, may you live a life of thanksgiving, of praise. I pray that today you will not miss God. You will not miss him in the affairs of life. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Give him thanks, give him thanks for this is his will god inhabits the praises of his people anytime you are joyful oh many things will be happening in your favor joel chapter 1 verse 12 he says when joy lacks in your life dries up everything will dry up you just be walking and walking everything will dry up remember rejoice forevermore thank the lord thank the lord fulfill his will it is his will that you rejoice you resemble him when you rejoice psalm chapter 2 verse 4 say he that seated in the heavenly places shall laugh so whom do you resemble when you are complaining and murmuring just give god thanks give god thanks may you receive the grace to give god thanks and enter into the mystery of gratitude than to go into ingratitude and destroy yourself remember it is loving god it is loving people touching lives positively and serving 
our God. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with his love and his presence. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and he has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.